Yo, 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 good people. It's your homie, Herb, man. Busting you back upside the head with another hot banger boogie. Hey, look, go tell somebody to go tell somebody your homie, Herb, man, is on. And if you are new to this channel, this is your first time tuning in. Welcome. Go ahead and hit that logo right at the bottom of your screen right there. And hit that notification bell so that you never miss what we bring to the table. All right. And do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. All right. Now, what we're talking about today is Africa's most nutritional foods. All right. And before we get into a lot of these great, great foods, I want to explain to you or give you a little backdrop of what we actually are looking for. You know, I'm always looking for a rhyme and a reason. I'm always looking how to connect and keep things interconnected. Okay. So what you need to understand is that these foods and what the body needs is energy okay energy and there are certain plants out here that can be are packed with energy all right for our cells as well as ourselves all right and we need this energy and a lot of these foods are energy great energy sources and so you're going to see that they're going to have pretty much almost everything the body needs from amino acids to vitamins and minerals all right um all the way down to uh you know some of the some of the most basic stuff all the way to some of the most incredibly um, um, unknown stuff that you probably wouldn't even guess that is in a lot of these foods. All right. And so they uh, pretty much cover the whole spectrum. And each of these foods really deserves its own time in the sunlight. All right. But we're just going to go through them and kind of let you see exactly what they do. And hopefully, if you guys want more, we'll break them down one by one in the other videos, all right? So let's go ahead and get started. Now, again, these are Africa's most nutrit nutritious foods, okay? And again, we're talking about energy sources. So all of these foods gave the people of that time and now the proper energy that they needed to get through their day. And not only with the energy did they give them, but they also gave them stuff for their immune systems. They also gave them stuff for their digestive systems. They gave them stuff for their cardiovascular systems. You know, these foods really, really was, like I said, they covered the whole spectrum of health. When you're talking about that, they gave them things for their skin, for their eyes, okay, for their, uh, you know, vitamin D. Uh, I mean, all of these things and these foods had a lot to do with it. So the number one thing, and these are not in any kind of order, but we're going to start with teff, okay? And teff is a very, very good grain, and it is one of the grains that is highest in calcium of all the grains. And we know calcium is going to be very good for not only the bones and tissues, but also the immune system, okay? So this is where you can get your calcium punch right here in teff. Uh, it is also high in protein, iron, and vitamin C. And these are just to name a few. These uh, foods are packed with a whole lot of the things that we need that is missing in our processed grains right now. I know we're eating cheaper grains, but because they're cheaper, they're also missing a lot of, of vital minerals and nutrients and amino acids and antioxidants. Okay. So uh, again, TELF is a very, very good uh, food. It is one of the most nutritious and it has got the highest calcium of all grains. Now, funyo. Funyo is one of those uh, foods that is on the move, uh, that is, you know, really, really cultivated into an international food. Uh, it is one that I would suggest you do your research on and really get to know about the benefits of funyo. But one of them is that it is very high in amino acids. And again, we're going to need amino acids because those are the building blocks, right? Those are what breaks down protein and builds up the right protein inside of your body. So you're going to need things that are great with amino acids. you got about nine of them that are essential that you cannot get unless you're eating these particular foods that will give you these nine essential amino acids. And so that's why it's important to make sure your foods carry the proper amino acids. The third one on the list is amaranth. Now we've heard of amaranth. Uh, amaranth has been on the move for a number of years now. It is a very ancient food, um, been around for at least 3,000 years. And amaranth has 30% more protein than the rice we're actually eating right now. 
So again, when we're talking about the cheaper grains, the rice, the corn, and the wheat, we have to be careful all right, of eating those things because uh, you have better foods out there, better grains, okay, that are more nutritious for you. And I know a lot of times we do go toward the cheaper foods because of the price incentive, but we also need to um, always factor in the health incentive as well, all right? Now, amaranth also has the essential amino acid lysine, and lysine is going to be uh, one of those essential amino acids that are very good for the uh, the tissues in the body as well, okay? Now, Number four, and a lot of people don't know that this particular food derives from Africa, but it is one of the most nutritious foods on our list here. It is one of the most nutritionally dense foods in the world. And this uh, food is called moringa, okay? Moringa. It is one of the most nutritionally dense plants, all right, in the planet. And it's high in protein, it's high in calcium, it's high in iron, it's got the zinc that you need, the vitamin A, the vitamin C. And it just, the list just goes on and on and on. And so moringa is one of those things that you really need to do your research in and try to get that into your medicinal cabinets as quickly as possible, especially when you're talking about uh, any type of food insecurities, any type of food shortages, uh, any type of stuff like that. These are going to be the foods that you're going to need to lean on, okay? Not that cheap bag of rice, but maybe you need to get you uh, some moringa leaves, or maybe you need to get you a bag of teff or a bag of funio, or you may need to just continue to stock up on these grains. But these foods resonate very good for the African body, okay? And just pretty much they're good for almost anybody, but more importantly, definitely for the African body. Um, now, the next one is pumpkin leaves. Pumpkin leaves have become a great, great staple in Africa. And they are packed with a lot of nutrition. And we're talking about having vitamin A and vitamin C, calcium, iron, folate, which is in America, uh, most Americans are deficient in folate or folic acid. All right. It also contains potassium and a range of B vitamins. And we know B vitamins is going to be very good for what? Our digestive system. Okay. It's going to be very good for us as we age as well. B vitamins are going to be very good for bones and all of that type of stuff. So pumpkin leaves, you definitely want to know about that. Now, number six is, uh, and I may, I may botch this name up, but it's baobab fruit. Baobab fruit, okay? And this particular fruit is a great fruit, and this is also really getting a lot of attention, okay? And these are things that we may not know of. But if you're into health, if you're into what's new, if you're into something that is really, really going to be beneficial to your health, trust me, people know about this fruit. And this fruit is particularly high in antioxidants. Again, one of those things you're going to be needing so that your body does not what? Oxidate itself. All right. And so it's going to be good in antioxidants, very high fiber. OK, and that's going to be very good on the digestive system and allowing you to uh, filter your food through your gut lining and your intestinal tracts. It is also good in for potassium, magnesium and iron. OK, so this is going to be a very good fruit when we're talking about our digestive system and also when we're talking about um, our muscle health because of the magnesium we're also talking about heart health and all those types of things as well when dealing with magnesium now number seven is a all too well known hibiscus now hibiscus is very high in antioxidants and vitamin c now every time you hear vitamin c you should automatically uh uh you know constitute that or parallel that with your immune system okay and anytime you hear calcium that's going to be about your bones and your tissues, okay? Anytime you hear about vitamin E and A, those things are going to be about your skin and your eyes, okay? So that's what you want to be looking at. And you get to understand that if you're eating foods that have all these benefits, when you're talking about vitamin A, all of your B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, and, and, um, and vitamin K, and those are going to be your really, really main ones that you need to make sure your food has something of those sorts in there. All right. And number eight is tamarind. And tamarind is another one of those great fruits. 
that's going to be high in fiber. It's give you some vitamins and minerals, a lot of those, as well as antioxidants. So tamarind is one of those that has almost, uh, again, it crosses so many spectrums. When you're talking about fiber, having a lot of vital minerals and vital min uh, uh, vitamins in it, and also antioxidants, the only thing you're missing from that list would would be uh, amino acids, right? And then you just couple that with some other stuff like funio, and, and then you're able to create pieces of, of foods that are high in mineral content that's giving your body what it needs. And remember, when you get... When you are sufficient, when, you're, when your body is satisfied with the vitamins and minerals that it needs, it's no longer hungry. It's no longer craving for anything, okay? It's no longer um, out of balance as well. So we got to remember that. And we don't know the state of our, vital, of our vitamin and minerals. A lot of us do not know what, where we are when we're talking about our vit vitamins and mineral deficiencies. So we really need to home in on how to get that information. And once we get it, then we need to collect the foods that will give us the energy that we need to get us through our day. All right, number nine is coconut. We know coconut is a very, very good nutritious food, especially for its healthy fats. And when we're talking about coconut water, coconut water is going to be good for electrolytes, which will then replenish your cells, okay? So that, that, that coconut is very good. Um, and number 10 and 11 are two new nutritious foods that I really haven't heard of before I done the research. Um, uh, number 10 is going to be kinkaliba, kinkaliba. All right. And kinkaliba is going to be very good as a digestive detoxifier, a digestive detoxifier. And it's also going to be good for digestive stimulant. Okay. And so you want to do your research with kinkaliba. It is a very well-known uh, nutritious food in Africa, but not too well-known to the Western uh, world. Um, but again, this is very good for your digestive detoxifying. Um, the story behind this is a lot of uh, people would eat this to make sure that their uh, digestive system was working properly, especially if they was going out on long, uh, you know, uh, 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 scavengers or long uh, uh, explorations or whatever. And, you know, if your if your digestive system acts up on you while you're out there, you're going to need something to stimulate your digestive tract and try to get that some homeostasis back in there, some peristalsis back in there. And so this particular food here was very good at bringing that digestive system back into balance, all right? And then the next one is spider plant or African cabbage, okay? And this is going to be very good in, in uh, high in beta carotene, which is going to be very good. We, we, we definitely need that beta carotene um vitamin c as well so you're talking about immune system it's got high proteins in it as well as high amino acids okay and so again as you see down here at the bottom we're talking about amino acids vitamins and minerals and antioxidants okay these are the three things uh you can always add to this particular list but for me these are the three main bases the foundations of what you're looking for in your food it's the foundations of what you're looking for in your foods. And you want to continue to do your research on what the body needs. And basically what you're trying to do when you're eating, when you're fixing your plate, when you're going through the grocery store looking for what it is for you to eat and what it is for your family to eat. Again, you want to keep in mind your energy and what you are needing energy for. What part of the day you're at is always going to determine how much energy you need. In the morning, you need a lot of energy to get you through, all right? So I'm not saying have everything for breakfast, but you you, you do what you need to do to get you to lunch. You you do what you need to do at lunch to get you to dinner, and then you do what you need to do at dinner to get you to bed, okay? So again, just with that alone, we understand that at night, we need to taper off because we're not going to be exuding as much energy so we don't need as much energy foods okay and remember all of these foods are supposed to be some source of energy but if you're dealing with processed foods all right the more processed they are the less energy they may give you or the more i would say more of a of a false energy that they will give you right a uh, fast burning energy so what you need is something slow burning energy 
And this is what this list is all about. Slow burning energy foods that will get you through the rigor mortis of the day, that will get you through uh, any type of situation when dealing with issues with your immune system, with your digestive system, with your cardiovascular system. All of these foods, I, I didn't even put up here all of this stuff and what it actually does for the body when you're talking about most of these foods is going to be helping you with if you have high blood sugar levels, which means that if you're dealing with diabetes, these are going to be the foods for you. If you're dealing with cardiovascular diseases, these are going to be the foods for you, okay? If you're dealing with obesity, these are going to be the foods for you. And one thing about obesity is that really obesity is the gateway drug to diseases, okay? So once we get into the habit of overeating and we get to a point of obesity, that's when we start seeing the drudgeness of high blood pressure and high cholesterol and uh, you know, heart diseases and cancers and all of these things reside in a obese body. Okay, in a obese body. So the first thing is to do is to curb our overeating, our overconsumption of food. All right. And especially when we're dealing with false sources of energy. So we're putting a lot of processed foods in us because it's so fast burning that by the next five minutes, you need something else to refuel you to get you through. Right. You're exuding so much energy, so much thought energy, so much uh, um, uh, talk energy, so much uh, 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 love energy and, and so much physical energy. All of that stuff is energy. All right. And it could it could it could draw out, you know, it could drain you. And if you're not eating the proper foods, right, that can really, really sustain you in those times, then we're going to be headed for nothing but disease and sickness. OK, so. These are Africa's most nutritious foods. Again, if you guys want more information on this, if you want me to break these things down, which I believe that every one of these foods deserves their own video, their own show, their own highlight, you know, because they're just that important to the African continent as well as the African body. OK, and so that's what we're talking about. And I hope you guys enjoy this. Remember, you can leave comments down below. If you guys need any more information on these, trust me, I will go ahead and break them down for you and explain each one by themselves and give you all of the benefits, the pros and the cons to each one of them. And, I, and also, too, we can talk about how we can allow these things to be accessible. Some of these things are accessible. Some of them are not. Teff is no longer uh, uh, exported from Ethiopia because, again, once we start putting our hands on this food, then unfortunately, sometimes some of these indigenous continents that uh, these foods come from, the people can't even get the food. Why? Because the popularity of the food went up and then therefore the prices went up. And now you have the indigenous people of those places that are actually growing the foods for us are not able to purchase their own foods. So they're not able to eat their own nutritious foods and having to opt out for a more cheaper variety of rice, corn, and wheat um, instead of being able to eat sorghum and teff and all these different things. Why? Because as soon as we hear about something nutritious, we go and exploit the food. And we got to make sure that, yes, we do want to be able to partake in anything that will allow us to be healthy, but we also need to understand the point of conservation and we can't continue to uh, exploit the plant and exploit the soil and then we have nothing for us all right out here so we want to take care and we want to be good husbands uh to the earth and to the plants and to life here so that we can have an abundance when we actually need it we don't need to have anything stocked up for a rainy day but when you need it you should be able to get it all right now i love you guys and it's absolutely nothing you can do about it go tell somebody go tell somebody your homie was on and until next time, peace. Yes, sir.